and channel of the now award-winning Arc Animal Tarot and Oracle deck. And I am here with my dear sister, witchy poo, all things tarot master. Y'all, there's nothing she can't do. Um, award-winning author, Dana Winters. And we are working up this tarot series for you so that you can take a deep, deep dive into the uh, tarot card meanings, how to use them in readings, and and then also burying all of the uh, animal energy and medicine with it. So Dana, say hi to the folks out there. Hi everybody, how are you doing? I'm glad to be here. Um, as Bernadette introduced me, I'm Dana Winters. I'm the author of uh, Wicca, What's the Real Deal? Um, Sacred Object, Sacred Space, and the Esoteric Dream Book. I'm actually the co-author of those three books. Um, and I, as she said, I am an award-winning author, which she says I never say enough. <laughs> <laughs> And, and I'm happy to talk about tarot. It's one of my favorite subjects. At, and she knows it like no other human being. So, all right. So we are going to get started today with the two of wands. And we have kind of a, a checklist that we put together based on our all of our years of teaching and kind of how we've watched students progression go and, you know, kind of one little step to the next. So the first thing that we uh, want to go over before we dive into the actual you know, meanings and symbolism is all of the metaphysical correspondences, because when you flip a tarot card or you flip tarot cards, it's not just about that card. It has associated elements with it that can help you really get a much more clear picture um, of the story that's unfolding for your client or as, as they're called, querent or sitter. And with the two of cups, the metaphysical correspondences are... Um, so the element is, Dana? Oh, well, that depends on your viewpoint. It gets a little complicated here because it can be, most people say fire, um, but some people associate it with air. Um, yeah. And it really depends on your point of view and how you view it will change its meaning ever so slightly and sometimes significantly. Yeah. Um, but you can also view it from both points of view um, to get even a broader perspective. So I would say fire slash air uh, are these associated elements. Yep. Oh, sorry, folks, if you couldn't hear me so well, I forgot to put my microphone out, but I'm back. She's back. Okay. So um, also with the two of wands, the cardinal direction, again, depending on your perspective, whether it's you start out with the element air or fire, then that would pair up with the east or south, south being fire, um, east being air. Right. And, and the, numero the numerology correspondence uh, of the two of wands is, of course, well, you know, the number two. <laughs> but I'd like to talk about that really quickly about what the number two means mm -hmm. uh, when you're looking at it in the tarot. When you see the number two, Dana, or you even see like, you know, sometimes I'll even get it if I've got two pentacles next to each other or two wands next to each other, or, it, you know, the card is, is one of the two cards because each tarot card, um, whether it's a two, three, four, five, or six, that number has a particular meaning. And so in the tarot, two represents what? Like fives, you just want to close your eyes and go, oh no, but twos, what do they represent? Uh, for me, twos represent duality, balance, um, sometimes bringing two elements together to form a whole. So I, I guess it would be the duality or you could think yin-yang energies as well or mm -hmm. opposing, uh, opposing factors coming together. You know, like any reader, I get a lot of calls uh, to see about relationships or love. And when I see the number two uh, in, in wands or really in any of the suits in the, in the minor arcana, I, if I see it upright, I, I kind of am instantly on alert that that person maybe has felt very, very lonely and this may be the end to their loneliness or their feeling of separateness. And that's not just in love, like, you know, for a, a boyfriend or a girlfriend or, you know, whatever label you're giving it, you know, you particularly give it. But that can also mean for a job, for, for you know, for money, for a place to live, any of that kind of thing. And then if I see it in reverse, I'm like, ah, 
you know, sometimes it's delayed love or sometimes it's a love you got to let go of, but it's that it's, it's, it's either the call to go separate or the call to come together. So, um, and we talk a lot about the metaphysical correspondences in each of our videos because they're just so important when, you know, when you know the symbolism like Dana does, like, oh my God, I've never seen a human being know this much symbolism, period, um, which, you know, from all over the world, from all different cultures, and my, my way is more intuitive. I, I know the meanings, and I, I, I know all the symbolism, but I'm more called to look at things more intuitively. Um, so even if you're a balance of both, uh, which really Dana and I kind of are, although we each have our stronger suits, then knowing the, the kind of the backstory of the metaphysical correspondences can really be very, very helpful, can give you a lot more insight. So um, moving on, the associated zodiac signs um, with the two of wands, again, depending on your perspective, is it an air or is it fire? If you see it as a fire card, that would make Aries, Leo, and Sagittarius um, associated zodiac signs. If it's, you know, if you see it more as air, of course, the air signs are Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. So um, moving on, let's just jump right into the two of wands. What's, what's really the overall meaning of the two of wands? You know, when we, and, and just so you guys know, we base every, everything that we're doing, um, just like I based my deck on the Rider weight system, um, all of our tarot teachings, all of the, uh, these videos that we're doing about tarot, they are based on rider weight. So you'll see here on the screen, you know, the traditional, uh, I, I use radiant rider weight. I just like the colors better, but you know, it's a man in a red robe and he's, and he's po poised in between these two uh, wands and he's looking out over this gorgeous lush body of water with these all clear sky. Um, so what does, when you see the two of wands show up, mm. What, is, what do you like instantaneously know about its symbolism and meaning overall? Well, if there's two cards in the tarot that make me think about the power of tarot, tower, or tarot in general, it's the high priestess because she has knowledge of all worlds and the two of wands. Because the minute I see the two of wands, I think the world of possibilities is open. That's the man is holding a world in his hands. So it's like the world is your oyster. Um, and he's looking out across an ocean and of course, the ocean really represents the field of emotions, but it also represents the subconscious. So it's almost like the division between the conscious and the subconscious mind and all of the possibilities being in superposition, like quantum physics. Everything's up in the air. Now you're the observer and you choose uh, what, what reality unfolds. Right. So, you know, another thing that we like to help you guys take a look at is uh, what the color symbolism is in, in the cards. And so when you, you know, you take a look at things like, um, okay, well, he's standing on gray walls, right? That can be a little monotonous in a color. Gray is, you know, it's not really a peppy color and it can seem a little cold. And, and maybe there's the circumstance where the success, because he's obviously very successful, right? He's standing there, you know, on his, on his castle top. He does have the world in his hands. He's looking out over everything, considering the possibilities. But, you know, think about what he might have had to go through to be able to have those fertile lands that he's looking out over or get to the top of that castle. He may not have been born into that castle, into that rich family. He may have had to take it in a battle, right? Um, so I, I always try to, you know, when I, I see this card coming, like you, it excites me, but it also is a call for me to go, hmm, what did this person really have to face to get to where they are today? And I look at, the, you know, obviously the other cards and on, on mine, the animals around to, to give it a little more, um, you know, just a little deeper dive into there. And so when we see uh, some people don't read tarot cards upright and reversed, some people just read them upright. But if you are someone who reads them upright and reversed, um, the upright two of wands meaning would be for you. Well, it has several different meanings depending on the, the question, but in general, that the possibilities are open, that you can make choices. You have a lot of opportunities in front of you. It sometimes represents travel for me. 
because he's holding okay. the world in his hands. Um, and of course, if you reverse that, the, the two of or the two of wands in reverse, I always think of someone that's had the rug pulled out from underneath their feet. They they tried to seize an opportunity and it turned their world upside down. He's lost control of that world. He's lost control of being able. Well, well he thinks he or he or she thinks they've lost control. You don't ever really lose control. You are empowered to make choices, even if you don't like what those choices are. But your choices may fail to feel limited, or you may feel trapped in a situation that you really don't didn't predict, or didn't think through, or didn't see coming. So it, you're kind of turning your world upside down, literally. And that's in the reverse. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, when I take a look at the two of wands upright. Yes, it is. To me, it speaks about lots of really awesome opportunities. And, you know, like you said, the world is literally your oyster. But sometimes opportunities come with risk. And so I see it as a risk assessment card also. So that while everything looks hunky-dory, the devil is always in the details. So just be sure that, you know, what, what you're feeling and what you're seeing before you do step off of that ledge like the fool does and, you know, go towards that that you want. When I see the two of wands uh, tarot card reversed, the meanings to me are kind of, kind of, um, kind of similar to them upright. It just is maybe also there's some fear base in it. Like, what, what do you, what do you need to overcome? Like what's stalling you out? What's stalling you out from moving forward and going towards those dreams? And in some ways, well, you know, I've heard other teachers say that they kind of see it a little bit, um, just a tiny bit, kind of like the tower where you've got to go through all of these changes and all of, go ahead. Absolutely. I agree. Okay. Because when we, we talk about it in a love concept or when you're talking about two of wands in a relationship, an emotional progression. Wands, as I say, are always the most useful of emotional progression. So they can be very egocentric personalities and not being able to have foresight. Um, and communication is the pillar of a, any relationship, communication and trust. You can't communicate, you can't have a relationship. So the two of wands in reverse is really suggesting that you're having the inability to communicate. Um, and the tower, which is represents the Tower of Babel in the Bible, where God changes everybody's language when they're trying to reach him by building a tower up to him. Um, that's really, they can't communicate. So, of course, the tower crumbles. So it is the lack of communication in a relationship that's causing the problem. Yep, exactly. And, you know, again, readers, we, you know, people always want to know about love, right? And so um, the two of wands, uh, love being the central, you know, kind of component there will can, can oftentimes turn into a yes or no reading. So, because people, people just want, you know, your clients, your clearance, your sitters, they just want you to cut to the chase. Am I going to marry this person? Are we going to make up? Are we going to break up? You know, are we ever going to make it to this base, that base? And it's, it's, you can tell them that, right? Like the traditional yes or no tarot card reading, right? If it's upright, it means yes. If it's inverted or reversed, it means no. But you really can help your clients much better if you'll take the card and if it's in an upright position, which traditionally would mean yes, let's say, Dana, let, let's just take love as an example. And mm -hmm. let's say that somebody wanted to know um, if, if their boyfriend was ever going to come back to them. They got dumped. They want to know if their boyfriend is ever going to come back to them. And you see the two of wands upright, which mm -hmm. traditionally would mean yes. Okay, if you guys have ever seen Pet Cemetery, you know what can happen when somebody comes back to you. You know, if you've ever seen um, what's the Sandra Bullock movie with um, Nicole Kidman, they're they're the uh, um, Practical Magic. Practical yeah. Magic. You know what can happen? Her boyfriend came back. That didn't go so very well, although it was very funny. But um, so if you saw that, you saw the Two of Wands upright in a you know, hey, look, just cut to the chase. Is he going to come back to me? What would you tell your client? Well, if it's upright, it, it's definitely a yeah, yes, because it shows the world the possibilities open. Um, and some clients, that's all they want to hear, and they won't let you go any further. You try to tell them, and they'll shut you right down. I don't need to know anything else. That's it. That's all I called for. 
So, so if, if they're open to me talking to them about it, I will say to the effect that, yes, the world of possibilities is open, but that also, we're talking about possibilities. There's multiple possibilities here. Yes, he could come back to you and it could work out. Yes, he could come back to you and it could not work out. Yes, he could come back to you and you can start with the same problems you had before and they'll rear their ugly head and you'll be starting over in the same place. So the answer is yes, but it, it's a conditional yes because when you talk about the world of possibilities, you're talking about multiple possibilities, not just one possibility. Do you know what I mean? Because if you uh -huh. think about choice as being in superposition and what you choose chooses the path, it all depends on how they behave, how they're received. It, it's multiple factors that play into how that will pan out for them. Right. It, she'll dig deeper into the answer. It's a, a watch what you wish for equation. You know, one time, <laughs> it's so funny you mentioned that because one time I actually had this scenario. Um, this lady was just so impatient. God love her. And I, I understand, listen, who doesn't get uptight about love, right? And um, she was like, look, I just want you to cut to the chase. I just want to know if we're going to get back together or not. Is this marriage going to last? And sure enough, the two, the two of wands came up. But as I was staring at the card, as I was staring at the card, I, I had a vision. You guys will get used to me. I have visions. I truly do. And both of the wands burst into flames. Wow. And I said, huh. Okay. I said, you want me to cut to the chase? I'm going to cut to the chase. Yes. This person's going to come back. You'll get a text. You'll get a phone call. And he will initiate. That's a fact. However, I really see that this is a twin flames relationship oh, there you go and she said yeah. oh my god i just ordered a book this morning off of amazon about twin flames i'd never heard of them wow. so then we had a conversation and when she left she she knew the writing on the wall she knew that it would you know they could do the makeup breakup thing forever um in a very unhealthy highly dysfunctional way or um, she could understand it for what it is, you know, past life thing, working out karmic debt, if you believe in that, um, soul contract, they'd come together in this lifetime to teach each other X, Y, and Z. You know, there's a million kinds of things that that could be, but twin flames, um, though, though highly unprovable, um, there are so many, so many pieces of evidence that can lead to believing in the twin flame thing, which is, um, you know, to me, what it, what it says is you just, it's spontaneous combustion. There are people that you cannot live with, but God, you can't live without. And it's like constantly being on this push and pull seesaw kind of thing. It's debilitating. And when you talk about wanting to, you know, uh, cut the golden threads so you can move on to other relationships. Oh my gosh, those seem like the hardest things to do. So just know you guys, if you look down at your tarot cards and you're, you know, you're doing a tarot card reading and you start to see the figures move around or the pentacles, I see them spin a lot. Um, sometimes I'll literally see them flip up and down in the air. Like somebody has put them in their finger and flip them. You're not losing your mind probably. Okay. I'm not a medical doctor. I'm not a medical professional of any kind. I'm not diagnosing you, but you're probably not losing your mind. You're probably just being a very in tune tarot reader. Um, so, you know, I hope that gives you guys a really good overview. Um, you know, when you're trying to interpret the, the two of wands in a reading, when you're trying to give, you know, as clear and accurate information to your client as you possibly can, um, about love, about career, about finance, about, you know, a move that they might make really about anything just to recap, you know, please be sure that, you know, the metaphysical correspondences, you know, the element associated with that tarot card, you know, the cardinal direction. So let's say for instance, that you, um, you know, let's say you associate air with the two of wands rather than fire. Let's say you do. What, Dana, does that element bring to the two of wands in a situation where you're flipping and you see that? What, what could they instantaneously know about that card because of its attachment to the air element? Um, when, I, when I think air, I think things that have to do with the intellect, 
So balance of the intellect, or sometimes if the cards are reversed, there may be either an imbalance where something's overly emotional and not enough intellect is being used to keep the situation in balance. Um, if it's upright, something requires just intellect or um, just enough intellect to keep it in balance. Um, or, you know, the flow of thoughts, ideas, creativity. Um, creativity kind of borders on the fire because you got the, you get the spark of yeah. creativity. But it's also intellect because it's, it's the transmission of ideas. Um, so I, I would think more about intellect, thought, processes, um, anything associated with the eastern corner, and of course, air. Right. And, um, you know, of course, knowing the numerology, the numerological correspondences. But it's always really helpful for me when I'm reading um, to know the zodiac correspondences, because here's how it works in Bernadette's head. So, you know, you guys know that um, all my wild ones, I, I appreciate you so much, by the way. Um, everything is an animal to me, right? So the zodiac is based on animals. Even, you know, the Gemini is human. It's the twins, but humans can be spirit animals. That's my theory. I love to argue that, by the way. So anytime you guys want to do a video with me arguing that whether humans can be spirit animals or not, let's do that. It's a lot of fun. Um, <laughs> and then when you get to the scales, it's it's not an animal. And so that's one I, I kind of am on the fence or a little imbalanced about because when I see the scales of justice, my mind instantly goes to lawmakers and law, um, you know, people that take care of those things, judges, police, military, you know, that kind of thing. But the reason I go into the Zodiac components of it is, let's say that you're reading and the Two of Wands comes up and let's say that you identify um, fire with the wand suit, right? The, the, in the minor arcana. And let's say that you're, you, you're looking at that card and all of a sudden you, you see the sea goat or you hear the word sea goat and you're like, huh, Sagittarius. Well, you can either go take a step and go, Huh. So let let's say it's let's say we're let's go back to the love thing, right? Because everybody asks about that. So let's say it's a love reading. You might say to that, you might say to your client, "Are you a Sagittarius, or is the person that you're in love with a Sagittarius?" And they may say no. And then you may say something like, because you would know at that point what the symbolism um, and meaning for goat is. It could be anything. So, oh my gosh, I actually. Holy cow, I actually have, or holy goat, I should say. I actually have, I actually had a story for this. No joke. I can't believe I, wow. Okay. My dog, she is a goat. Uh, actually, she's more of a cow. But anyway, so um, I was doing a reading for somebody one time. This was years ago. I can't even believe I can remember it. I was a young reader and I just got stuck on the two of wands card and it was a college kid and oh my God, her world was going to end. You know, if this if this fraternity guy didn't ask her to marry him, they'd been together all four years of college. And I looked at her and I said, you know, I just I just keep seeing a goat. And at the time, I wasn't experienced enough in tarot. You know, a year later, it hit me because I kept I kept processing that in my head. And a year later, it hit me because what I said to her was, well, she goes, why are, why are you seeing a goat? And I said, well, I said, I know the, I know cards are attached to Zodiac signs. I don't know exactly. I'm kind of new to, you know, to this. So I know all the meanings and everything, but the metaphysical correspondences, I'm still kind of learning. And I said, but that, that would tell me this is attached to Sagittarius. And I said, but I just, I intuitively, I just feel like through college, through this whole time, the number one problem that you have had and the one thing that's kept you unseated and not able to just sit in the power of this relationship is this guy's eye on climbing higher, climbing higher, climbing higher. He is so success oriented. He's got no time and no care for anything else. And I said, and the reason I know that is goats, can climb an entire mountain literally with two square inches of space to put their little hooves on. And if you've ever watched a video of them, they'll, they'll, they'll press their body up against the mountain and they'll climb. Like it, it's this, it's the most miraculous thing you've ever seen. 
So I do feel like he's going to have tremendous success, but I think it might come at the, at the cost of your relationship. And don't you know that lady came to see me? She went on to get her master's and she came to see me a few years later and she was like, yep, that, that was an epic fail. So I, I really encourage people to get to know the, the, the zodiacal animal um, behind each card because you just never know when that card is going to flip. And it may, may be about the card, yes, but it may lean more towards the animal. So, um, Dana, I, I'm out. I'm like, I think that's all I, <laughs> I think that's all I know about the two of wands. Well, how about you? Do you have anything else to add? Um, other than when you, you're talking about the zodiac, sometimes I'll, I'll uh, look at something like somebody will say, for example, you, you think Libra or Gemini. Maybe someone's not really a Libra or a Gemini, but sometimes they can take on a Gemini type temperament. Well, they can take on a Libra type temperament. It doesn't mean they are that zodiac sign, but they will behave in, in such a way where you know balance becomes a, a priority, or they may become extra chatty, or you know, like opposition, or uh, be out of balance. Like mm -hmm. the two of one suggest, balance is important. So you don't necessarily have to apply a specific zodiac sign to a person. It could be a temperament or a, a behavior that they take on. You know, thank you for bringing that up. I totally missed, I totally missed bringing that up, but you're right because each Zodiac sign has a motto like, um, Scorpio, I desire. Yeah, uh, Scorpio is I desire. Taurus is, <laughs> Taurus is, uh, I don't know what Taurus is. I don't know what Taurus, Taurus is. is uh, I hate change in any possible I, way. Yes, <laughs> exactly. Really I don't want to move. Taurus. <laughs> but, but you're right. You, you're very, very right. Um, it doesn't have to, they, that person, sitting in front of you, your client or the person or people they want to know about, they don't have to be that Zodiac sign, but they might have the temperament based on the motto of that Zodiac sign. Ooh, good call, Dana. See you guys. This is why I love her. This is why she's a tarot master. She forgets nothing. She misses nothing. It's creepy. Anyway. All right. You guys, thank you wild ones so much for tuning in. We really appreciate when you spend time with us. We hope you find these videos valuable. Um, because Dane and I will talk about tarot from here to Kingdom Come. So, so we're trying to we're trying to time ourselves these days so we don't go on and on and on because we can. So anyway, again, thank you. Um, don't forget if you do not have your copy of the Arc Animal Tarot and Oracle deck, it's a hundred card deck, 78 cards in here based on the Rider Weight Tarot deck, and then uh, 22 bonus cards that you can use to gain extra clarity on your readings. And a if I do say so myself. Mac Daddy, yes, I still say that. It shows my age. 300 and I can never remember, 370 page guidebook um, with all the stuff in there about numerology and directions and colors and elements. And then each page, um, each tarot card has the tarot card meaning as well as the um, spirit animal meaning. And it's in full color. And you should buy one today because you will love your animals like well, all the rest of us wild ones do. So, and also don't forget to check on Amazon for Dana's books. Um, we'll put the links below. And if you guys would like to book a reading with Dana and I, the, those links are also below. And uh, again, thank you so much. Dana, if you have anything, parting words for the wild ones? Thanks for tuning in. It was a pleasure. I enjoy talking about Daryl. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. All right, you guys, take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>